Hi, it's Rachel from Good Behavior Beginnings. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about the handiwork activity that we have included in our homeschool. So stick around if you wanna hear more about what our handiwork and manipulatives look like. The goal of handiwork was to have a fine motor skill activity that also involved following directions. My kid is great at doing the creative stuff, coming up with their own plans for things, but sometimes when things don't come out the way that they wanted them to, they get really frustrated and quit. So I wanted to come up with something that had a specific end product and required fine motor skills and following instructions to get there to sort of continue to work on persistence and using some of those calming strategies um, when they're feeling frustrated. So we came up with the idea for handiwork. The options that we have for handiwork, one is sort of knotting together these little bits of fabric. And as you can see, it requires a little bit of fine motor skill to get there and tie it in a double knot. And the idea is we have a bunch of these pieces that once we knot them all together, it'll make a big blanket, or if we don't get that far, a small blanket. Um, but it will be something that then can be used in the future. But it's sort of a long-term project. Uh, the other options that we have, I'm pretty sure we got this as like a birthday present, um, but it's different paper airplane patterns. So it requires some paper folding, but it has nice instructions. It has paper that's already got like the lines on it and everything. So that's pretty cool. Plus then we get to go upstairs and uh, shoot them off the balcony so we can see how far they go. Another option is using these little twisty sticks and putting them on to little patterns. I'm not sure where we ended up with these, but at some point we ended up with these type of bendy sticks with a little mat and patterns to follow. So doing things like that where you have to use the fine motor skills to twist. But really the one that we have done most of the time so far has been origami. So again, not sure how I end up with this. I'm sure it was a find somewhere at a thrift store. But each in there, they have um, cards. And these cards have the step-by-step -step directions. They usually have, the simple ones have another direction on the back, so you can do a couple of different things. And the kid has really, really enjoyed the origami. Now, I will say that some of them are a lot of me doing the folding and then uh, them folding down the other side to match. So we're not to the point where these are independent activities. Uh, but again, like I said, we're working on fine motor skills. We're working on um, dealing with frustration and persistence with a somewhat challenging task. And so far, they've been really good. And I'll keep looking for other things. We have Legos, but all of our Legos are just in a giant bin and we don't have any little instruction packs. So Maybe if we got some small kits with Legos, that might be something that we could do here as well for handiwork. Um, but so far, this is going really well. With manipulatives, primarily we've been using the manipulatives during reading and with our art projects, actually. So the uh, manipulatives just consist of building materials that require some fine motor skills, but not necessarily have to be done in a certain way. So I have some of those geometry shapes that you can put in patterns on the floor. I have some of the, I don't even know what all these things are called, um, bamboo rods with little plastic end caps that hook them together. I think they're called flexi sticks. Uh, we also have some other ones that like snap together and we have some magnet shapes that snap together. So all of those things sort of fall into our manipulatives bin and 
we've used those for making 3D shapes with uh, geometry and let's see, it's called Studying Geometry Through Art and it's with Blossom and Root, which is our language arts curriculum, which also has a bunch of science and a little bit of math and art and stuff with it. So we've been using those to make some of those shapes that we're learning about. Um, and I also let the kid play with them while I'm reading long bits of information. I check for comprehension um, as we go. So I'm asking questions and, and making sure they're paying attention, but it's nice to give them something to fidget with, something to do while they're listening. And instead of just sitting and staring at me, because that's not really where we are right now. That's not super enjoyable. So that's really it. That's how we've been doing our handiwork activities and how we've been using our manipulatives. I'll let you guys know if we update either of those with different things. And let me know if you use something similar to work on fine motor skills in your homeschool.